Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Obviously, those that attend Elevate, you know that this is our Ignite service. And uh, you just never know what's going to happen at Ignite. We, we plan, you know, we do our part. And uh, that's one thing that we do here at Elevate is that we fill our well and the Holy Spirit draws from it. And um, so tonight, please forgive me if I'm going to be all over the map, but that's okay. That's what Ignite's about, right? It's just kind of like Holy Spirit move and, uh, and, and it's also an activation. That's why I had you guys pray for people tonight because, listen, you don't need a title to pray for people. You just need to believe that you have a God who loves people so much that he wants them healed. And uh, so I want to just share something with you tonight, and uh, we'll have some fun. And uh, I do want to say this. As we're preparing for Easter, which we're only uh, two weekends away, f- and we have, uh, we have six services for Easter week- weekend, and I'm telling you, this place is going to be packed and filled with people who are far away from God. But I want to challenge you. The only way that happens is we, the church, have to remember that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, okay, everybody say resurrection. It's so cool. They got, me, they got me some new colorful markers. Isn't that cool? But after the resurrection, okay, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know what happened? He ascended above, right? But before he ascended above, he said, I'm going to send someone down. <laughs> And he said, I would send hashtag Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm not going to leave you an orphan. I'm going to leave you a helper. And so listen, Jesus goes up, but then he brings down his spirit. Everybody say his spirit. The Holy Spirit is simply this. It is God's spirit living inside of you. So isn't that great to know? And it's, it's, it's interesting how much information we know, but how much we don't live. That God gave us his spirit, which means that he loves to have a personal relationship with you and I. He is so intimate that he lives inside of you. He's so intimate that he wants to do life not only in you, but he wants to do life through you. And so many times we, 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 we fail to realize that, that the only reason that we as Christians get mundane with our Christianity... The only reason that we constantly have these emotional roller coasters that we all experience, trust me, we all go through seasons of, of, of dry, dry, just the season of just dryness and, and, and the season of just kind of feeling lost. And I don't know about you, but that's real stuff. The struggle is real. We go through stuff. But Jesus knew, God the Father knew. Aren't you glad that God loves community? God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's all about doing things together. He's not about doing anything alone. They all work as a community. God is all about us working together as a community. And then he deposits his spirit in us so that we can walk with power. And, and, and not just walk in power, but, but live in power. And, and not forget that you're not alone in whatever you're going through. And so tonight I'm just going to kind of want to stir our hearts again and say, wait a minute. I wonder if I've just lost that insight. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I wonder if I've lost the intel of realizing that I have someone powerful living in me. I have God's spirit living in me. Like really, like have you really fathomed the idea that God's spirit, his Holy Spirit, lives inside of me right now. Like you got to really take time and just like, wow, so I'm not alone right now. And so check this out. So he sends the Holy Spirit, but check this out. So once Jesus um, was resurrected and now he's with the Father, you know what happens next? Fifty days... After, which we celebrate Easter, okay, 50 days after Easter, 
Jesus tells them, you're going to wait in this place called the upper room. And it's in this upper room where I'm going to fill every single one of you with power from above. And he is the Holy Spirit. And he will ignite you. Everybody say ignite <laughs> with fire. And so I just want to tell you that the Holy Spirit was not just a biblical moment. The Holy Spirit was not a one-time deal that you read through the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is constantly wanting to do a new experience, wants you to have a new moment, and he wants it to be ongoing over and over and over again. He, he didn't stop, you know, in, in the book of Acts. As a matter of fact, you know what happened after Easter was the baptism of the Holy Spirit, hashtag Holy Spirit. And you know what happened after the Holy Spirit fell upon people? You know what happened? The church was birthed. It wasn't until the Holy Spirit came down upon man and then bam, the church was birthed. Because of God's Spirit, Elevate Church has been birthed. Or whatever church you go to, because I know we always get a lot of visitors from other churches here. The church was birthed. And so we love these services called Ignite. And I do have a message for you, but and it will be short, sweet, and simple. But I want to call up uh, uh, Lexi, who is our, our, our youth leader and, and her team that also help her with leadership. Yeah, now. That would be right now. <laughs> Can I get a microphone? And so... You know, one thing I love about our youth is that it's, it's, it's not about age, guys. We, we do this service called Ignite because we love to teach. We love to teach you to, to not just come and just be an observer. You know, we want you to be in the game with God. Uh, God needs you in, in your community. God needs you in the world. And you know what? We talked about these moments where we have a, an amazing move of God, which we do here at Elevate. But it's not... It's not just to keep and say, wow, wasn't church awesome tonight? No, it's like, now let's go take this and let's go shake the world. Let's go take this and let's create a move of God in your workplace. Like, let's stir up a Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's change a, a coffee bean. Let's, you know, yeah, coffee kiosk may be a drive through but we'll blow up that drive through as well, you know. Uh, it, it, it's just everywhere we go, we have to just stir the hearts of, of men and, and women and, and kids and youth. And so on Sunday, uh, Lexi started challenging her team. And, and so I just want, I want you to hear this because you all need to be ignited. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're already, you're already carrying the greatest voice inside of you. We just kind of light you up tonight. That's about it. Can we lit you up? Yeah, can I actually get my team up here, please? guys know who you are. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Lexi Hughes. I am a youth leader here at Elevate Church. Um, I serve along with these lovely people. Um, this is my team. Um, you guys want to say hi? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then we're, okay, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's also our other team too. They're awesome as well. Um, but this is Team Generate. So this is like the team that is still in high school and still in junior high. And they're awesome because they give their life every single week to serve their peers. And it's awesome what they're doing. But anyways, so last Sunday, um, I just felt in my heart to just empower my team. And I wanted to like really challenge them. And I know probably some of them like hated me when I challenged them because they're like, oh, it's like so out of their comfort level. But I, I told my team and I was like, guys, it's honestly so true. I think that a lot of times that we as the church or we as a Christian can complicate the power of God. I mean, God has given us the power to heal the sick, to pray for the people in the world or in our workplace or at our, in our high schools or junior highs or whatever it is. God has given us that power and it's through the Holy Spirit. 
And so uh, we complicate it so many times, but it's like God's like right there with us. And I love what Pastor was saying is that we're not alone. We have someone with us when we have the Holy Spirit. And so it was, I, I wanted to challenge our team. And so in our meeting, I was like, hey, guys, so guess what we're going to do today? And they're like, what? And I was like, we're going to prophesy over each other. And they're like, what? And I was like, a lot of them gave me, like, dirty looks. And they're like, what the heck? Like, why are you going to make me do this? And a lot of them are just, like, mad dogging me the whole time. But I was really explaining to them that the Holy Spirit lives inside of them. And all you really have to do is be like, God, help me. Holy Spirit, I partner with you. Give me a word for this, for this person. It's that simple. And it says in Acts 1.8, it says, but you will receive power and ability. So you can't give the excuse that be like, I don't have the ability to do what that person is doing. I don't have the ability to prophesy over that person. I don't have the ability to heal that person. But God's already saying that he has given you the power and the ability to do so. Yeah. Right? It's right here. It's the word. It's not, it's not my Bible. It's not the dictionary. It's the word of God. And so when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. It's everywhere, guys. And so God has given you the power and the ability to do so. And so I asked my team to share a little bit about how they felt, and then I'm going to release them, and they're going to prophesy over you guys. Is that cool? Yeah. Also, can I throw some? So, Lexi, did you share with them what happened on Sunday? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I yeah. didn't. Wow. Yeah, I totally yeah. for, I forgot the big kanuga. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. That's <laughs> See, but that's a good example of the Holy Spirit where you forget I remind you. Yes, thank that's you. That's how the Holy Spirit yeah. works. He reminds you of, he, that's, what the, that's what the Bible says, that the Holy Spirit will remind you of things that the Father has told you. Yeah, so true. Wow, that was a good example. Okay. Hey. Anyways. Thanks. So, <laughs> thanks, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so on Sunday, um, I had them all prophesy. So I gave them a minute. I was like, all right, guys, just take a minute. A lot of them were still mad at me, and they're like, oh, whatever. Um, and so I gave them a minute to sit there, and they just sat there. And then all of them prophesied over each other, and every single word was on point. On point. And some of, some, some of them were even, like, crying, and they're like, oh, my God, I didn't even think I could do that. And I was like, see, it's the Holy Spirit. But they're going to share a little bit of how they felt and what they experienced. <laughs> all right, well, uh, it was scary at first, but... Uh, what, like I was reminded of, I was praying and I was fasting for the whole day today. And I was really asking God, like, oh, give me a word. Like, what do I say? Like, I'm scared. Um, but he gave me the story of when Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish and uh, fed all the people. And what I got out of that was that you just need to be willing. And if even if you have a little will power and you have a little willing and you give it to God, he can multiply it and do so much more than yeah, you can very think good. is possible. Yeah. So. Uh, prophecy, like when I did it, like it's scary at first because you're like, oh man, like they're going to judge me. Like, oh, what's going to happen? But honestly, if you're just willing and you do it, then it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. Very good. Thank you. So I was, I was really scared and I was like mad at Lexi, but like it doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, I had like, I was struggling with believing and having faith in God that he would speak to me. Then I remembered, I was like, wait, if I have the faith of a mustard seed and I can move a mountain with that, what could I do with all my faith? So when I was just like praying to God and believing, I was like, God, what do I do? And he was like, girl, calm down. I got you. And then he was like, he was like, just listen to me. So I listened and the person I prophesied over, they said it was on point And I was like, thank you, Jesus. And yeah, so that's it. I was also very nervous at the beginning. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, it was very nerve-wracking at the beginning, but at the end, I was very happy with what I got. Like Becca said, we were all on point. I got Lexi's dad, and I knew nothing about him. And I was surprised that I got a word for him, and I was very glad about it. It was empowering. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, for me, personally, I felt like it was the, like, rush and like anxiety that you felt when you're about to get on a roller coaster like you're like yeah I'm so excited to do this but then you're like in line you're like oh my god what am I doing I can't do this that's how I felt and I was giving a word to Lexi and she's like my best friend so I was like she's my leader she's my best friend I can't I have to get this right so I was sitting there I'm like I got this all right 
And then I finally got the word, and I told Lexi, and I was like on the verge of like tears. I was like, the God wanted me to tell you. To it was weird, but after doing it, I felt confident and knowing that me, little old Kayla, can do something like that and give a word to her best friend and even give a word to you guys. Okay. Um, at first, I was very nervous. So I got Becca De La Rosa, <laughs> and we're not like super close, but we're close at the same time. But I was very nervous, and I was not confident at all because I didn't know didn't know what prophecy was exactly, and I felt like I didn't even know how to do it at all. And then Lexi told us to just ask God and just give it a moment and see if He gives you an image or word. So I got an image, and luckily I was on point. And she teared up, and so I teared up too. <laughs> I'm very emotional. <laughs> awesome. Lexi, Holy Spirit, is it okay if I give my word now? It has to do with my experience. Is that cool? Is that cool? Cool. Um, uh, on Sunday, you know what? I think I gave the dirtiest look to Lexi. Um, not even kidding. I was the only one who didn't. I was the only one who didn't do it. I just was, I was so like in pain and so angry. And I told her, she was like, she gave me a look. And I was like, and she was like, come on, you can do it. And, and I just came today and I was like, man, there has, there has to be like a breaking point. Because I knew everyone's been talking about pain, anger, and that's exactly what I was feeling. And I came to worship and I just felt so broken. I asked God, I was like, God, just give me one more chance. Just give me something tonight. And, and I remembered Samson in the book of Judges. Samson's like this leader of Israel. And man, he messed up. He let anger, he let, he let distractions with people, situations, bring him down to stop the call of God. And that's what I felt like. That was me on Sunday. So I was like, no, nah, man, no, Lexi, I ain't doing it. I was like, no, I told her no. And, and then she was like, okay. She doesn't force us like, Angela, you're going to do it. Like, she was just like, okay. And she took it. And she was like, all right. I was like, God, I'm not even worthy to come up here. Like, they all got, Angelique cried, all of them, me, me. I'm just like. <laughs> but what, got, what, what came to my mind tonight was in Judges 16, 28. And it was the same prayer that I prayed. And it's the one that Samson prayed. And God reminded me of it. And I flipped out and it said, Samson called to the Lord saying, oh, Lord God, remember me. I pray, strengthen me. I pray just this once. Oh, God, that I might that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my, two, for my two eyes. I was like, God, let me take vengeance and all the hate and anger and all the setbacks, God. I was like, just give me one more time. And, and it just blew me away. And I was like, God, why am I playing for one more time? Because with God, we can make so many mistakes. I could say no to Lexi so many times, but God still gives me another opportunity. And you need to know today with that pain or anger that you're feeling, you don't have to keep praying to God, God, just give me one more time of peace. Just give me one more time of love. God's saying you have a lifetime of it. Come on. There's a life, lifetime supply of it. And when it's so hard to even look at God, because let me tell you this, on Sunday, I didn't even want to look at God. I didn't want to, I was like, God, this is, I'm in a meeting, but no. But man, his eyes are so much on you and me. And there's no avoiding God. And when you can't find the peace and you can't find the hope, stop looking at you. Because I looked at me. I just looked at the situation. But let me tell you this. God always has a solution. And sometimes we can be giving our eyes so much to the problem that the answer is right there in front of us. Come on. And it's Jesus today. So just as we prophesy and as we just go out confidently, yeah, we may look like goofballs a little bit. We may not get it on point all the time. But you know what? We're going to believe in faith tonight. And we're saying as you as well, be in faith tonight with us. Just give up you so you can know him. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, you guys, you guys can stay up here as well. Just stay up here. Listen, you heard each one of them, they were saying, you know what, I was nervous, I was afraid. I, I didn't feel I had the ability, I didn't feel I could. Um, and then you can live the rest of your life, could have, should have, would have, but I didn't. And you know what, God's like, hey, listen, fine, that happened. But 
The importance of having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit is key to your personal growth. Without knowing him intimately. You see, it's like many of us know about healing, but we have to get better at knowing the healer. That applies to the Holy Spirit. Many of us know that he speaks words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and prophecy. Let's stop chasing that and let's start knowing him. Because when you know the Holy Spirit, then you know that he'll always have a word in season for you. If not, you'll just chase and chase and chase and end up in an empty place when God is saying, no, it's about you and me, not about everything else I give to thee. And so Peter, Peter was known to be the greatest coward when he denied Christ. Think about it, the greatest coward. You know that in the story when he denied Jesus, do you know that if you really study it out, and, and scholars, and I've read many, many different scholars and what they've written, it was actually a little girl who said the third time, aren't you the one who followed Jesus? And he said no, and even started cussing and saying, blankety, blank, 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 I don't know him. And if a little girl can cause this man to cower back and run, I mean, what's moving you right now? What is it? Now watch this, Acts chapter 4 through eight, four and 8 and then 4 and 13, listen to this. The same coward, the one who was afraid, the same one that was just running away from what God had promised him. Look, in first, I'm sorry, in Acts 4, 8 it says, Peter was, everybody say filled. So prior to hashtag HS, he had no fill of the Holy Spirit. After he was filled, look at this, with the Holy Spirit, he said to them, everybody say, he said to them, rulers and elders of the people, exclamation point. So he went from being like, no, no, I, I don't know him, I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't, to Mac, man, rulers and elders, bam! Look at verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the only one that will ever give you the boldness you need in order to live a Christ-like life that comes with power and exclamation points. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can look at the situation and speak to it with an exclamation point. But how many times do we come to a place of brokenness and hurting and we have the fallbacks of just kind of, I don't know, I can't, I don't know. And, and we've all been there. But the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, listen, the baptism was not just for the day of Pentecost. The baptism was not just for that one moment to be a historic moment, and that's all. The Holy Spirit says, I want to have and create new moments with you over and over and over and over again. Because here's the reality. Here's what life looks like. When you and I touch this. Okay, look at this. Something's going to come out of this, all right? Ready? Cool. I've never done this trick before. Let's try it. Ready? Pull this up like, like, like magic. Stand up. Help me out. Ready? Ready? Go. Pull it off. It's just my hand. That's okay. See, see it. Have a seat. Got all weird and excited. No rabbit. Sorry. <laughs> just, hi. No, but here's what happens. Listen, here's what happens. When, 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 we don't, when we don't have that intimate personal relationship with, with, with the Holy Spirit, watch the feedback, guys. Watch the feedback. We start. Let me read this first before because you know what? This will make more sense. Um, 
Matthew 3, verse 11 through 12, and then I'm going to show you this. This is John the Baptist telling everyone, hey, listen, I baptize you with water, calling you to turn away from your sins. But after me, everybody say, but after me. Yeah. See, God has a process to everything. He says, but after me, someone is coming who is more powerful than I am. I'm not worthy to carry the sandals. He will baptize you with what? And what? His pitchfork is in his hand to clear. Everybody say, to clear. Now listen, the Holy Spirit also comes to clear. I'm confused. He brings clarity. I lack direction. He guides. When you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to do. He comes to clear. Look, he says, it's to clear the straw from, from his threshing floor. He, ever say he. So the pressure's not even on you, it's on he. He will gather his wheat, and you and I are his wheat. We are his wheat. Do you remember when, when, when Jesus warned Peter, he said, Satan is going to come sniff you as wheat. But he said, but be of no fear. Don't be afraid because I've already prayed for you. And he says, into the storm. And so he puts his wheat and he stores them up for a, such a time as this. This is your season. This is your hour. This is your moment. This is our day. This is our year. This is where God wants to do something incredible. And we have to get hooked up with the Holy Spirit. And he says, but he will. So watch it. We hang out with the Holy Spirit. You start hooking up with the Holy Spirit and he will what? He will burn what? Do you know what this word husks is? A husk. He says, I'm going to burn the husks with fire that can't be put out. In other words, when I get all up in your life, nothing can stop me. But what happens with us is we get so dry when we stop seeking and soaking in his presence. Intimacy means that into me see, let's get real with me. And so when, when, when we start allowing ourselves to get angry, nothing wrong with being angry, but we start letting one thing after the next thing, and then we draw away and we draw back, and we, we go from, 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 from faith to coward, and we're, we're cowering back and not realizing that without the Holy Spirit, we'll never, we'll never be bold. We'll never be bold. They were uneducated and untrained men. You don't have to be trained in the Holy Spirit. You just need to know the Holy Spirit. And then he'll tell you what to do. But here's what happens now. It, if we start getting dry, I'm starting a fire. Yeah, I am. Look at this. I know, oh, my God, help. It's Jesus right now. Okay, you know what happens? What happens? Well, we start burning. Not a good way. Start stinking too. The smoke comes and etc. You get the big picture. It burns. We get crusty. We 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 start smelling and it just it just ah and, and you know what it's it's happened to me as much as it's happened to you. Let's just be real. Our stank doesn't have to be a a, a smell, but it can be a bad attitude. And it just becomes so so visible and so you start losing your character, which is love. Peace, joy, long suffering, kindness, goodness. We lose all that. But check this out. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit was not just a one time moment, but that the Holy Spirit constantly just is waiting for you and I to come into an ignite service or wake up in the morning in your house and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit? And then here's what happens I love the Holy Spirit because what happens is. You start soaking in God's presence, okay? So God says, I, my, my word is, is, is the water. It's the washing 
of the word that he said. So we start washing and soaking in God's word because, listen, the Holy Spirit will never be above the word. The word is the foundation for everything in God's kingdom. And so what we do is we, when we open our Bibles, what we're doing is we're, we're beginning to bask in his presence, in his word. And then his word begins to bring us worth back. And then our worth begin, begins to become a worship to God. And then so we soak in his presence. Like you coming to church tonight, let me tell you something. You guys are awesome for coming to church tonight. Because tonight, guess what? Tonight we all got soaked like this. Ooh, right? Hold on. Slow down. That's a lot of leak right there, huh? Yeah, we should be leaky. <laughs> Don't be a leaky faucet. Let's be, let's be leaking the Holy Spirit. And then you know what happens? When you leak and when you're soaked and you're just drenched with the Holy Spirit, there's a refreshing. Everybody say refreshing. Put, put your hand gently on the person next to you. Just say, he's going to refresh you tonight. Listen. He says, when the Holy Spirit, when he gathers his wheat into the storeroom, he says, but he will burn up the husks. The word husks means any dry place in your life. The word husks means any layer that has been basically just tripping you up and just, just capturing you into this place of just hardness of heart. God says, you get hooked up with my spirit and check this out. Can you guys see? He says, I will light you up, but guess what? My fire will only burn what doesn't belong in your life. My fire will only burn what I don't need from you. But the rest of you, guess what? Look, you're still white as snow. Man, I'll keep you fresh. I'll keep you holy. I'll keep you righteous. Now look, and not a burn will be on you. Not one burn. He will refresh you. He will refresh you. He will refresh you. He will refresh you. And nothing can stop what the Holy Spirit is going to do in your life and my life. Can we give Jesus one more hand clap of praise? If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.